When the Malaysian Airlines Flight MH370 went missing on March 8, 2014 with 239 on board, it was a worldwide obsession. Sad to say that every year auto accidents kill more than 1.2 million people worldwide. But how many people are interested to know? Physics may be simple and easy to understand. But in real world, it is a complex science. Every finding in a car crash are incredibly wrong. More than 50 years ago, men can already walk on the moon. But today, crashworthiness of cars are still not fully understood. Car crashes do not show much improvement over the years. Car crash damages in the 50 is quite the same as those today. Real world crashes remain very unpredictable. No one has yet provided the real world solutions. And no one could substantiate that the crash studies are accurate. But I can safely say that the crash studies are wrong. Even the simplest outcome of a crash is misinterpreted. I will show you why. One of these tests performed by the MITS busters is only one of the many myths. You would think that doubling the speed would give you twice the severity of the impact, but the physics says you're actually looking at more like four times the severity of the impact. Our sensors are showing three times the G's, and our wreckage is showing about twice the damage. So what's going on here? Well, just like this can, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand it. The cars speak for themselves. 50 miles an hour look exactly like the car we smacked into the wall at 50 miles an hour. That tells me everything I need to know. The two car crash hit on at their relative velocity could also be interpreted otherwise. The damage of the 100 miles per hour hit on crash should be the same because it involved two crumble zones or twice the stopping distance. People often overlook the key importance of the crash. I say this because it is wrong to use the crash speed 64 km per hour to star rate their cars. Everybody knows the fact that in a collision, the impact force increases exponentially in relation with the impact speed. For example, an average impact force is equal to the half the mass of velocity spread over the distance. If V is 64 km per hour, then V squared equals to 4096. And if the speed is increased by 26 km per hour, or V1 equals to 90 km per hour, then V1 squared is equal to 8100. The impact forces became double. Why can't we use the car impact resistance to rate our cars instead of the impact speed? Don't you think so that the impact resistance of the body shell in relation with the stopping distance is more appropriate to measure the safety of the car? The stopping distance determines the crash pulse, otherwise it was still fatal. Even the safety cage is not fully crushed. This documentary, When Physics Meets Biology, may show you how. How can three collisions occur in this one crash between a car and a wall? The first collision is between the car and the wall. The second is between the driver and the car's interior. And the third is between the driver's internal organs and the inside walls of his or her body cavities. Structure the car so that it crushes in front so you're bringing the car to a stop slowly over time. If you bring the car to a stop, that gives you time to protect the occupants right. inside, so that's a little extra time for you to manage the occupants' kinetic energy. Here's a challenge I give my students. Design an egg-carrying car from only two sheets of paper, but with unlimited amounts of glue. I provide the wheels and axles, but they must apply their science, knowledge, and skills to produce a crash-worthy vehicle that protects the... ...are the same. Keeping people safe in crashes has to do with extending impact time keeping the occupant compartment intact 
and tying the occupants to the compartment. What happens to the human body during a crash is determined by biology and physics. You can't argue with hard science. The integrity of the current conventional chassis may not be so reliable as you think they should. Your car chassis may look strong like one of this. The look may be mighty and strong, but when they started to buckle, they often gave way like soda cans. Soda can is rigid, firm, and poised on the surface, but once the load reaches its threshold, it crumbles easily. Here is how soda can crumbles. Most cars are like soda cans. This was a car before crashing onto a wall at 160 km per hour. It crumbles like soda cans. The current chassis usually buckles under load. My new chassis is designed to crumble and does not buckle prematurely. How the new chassis works? The new chassis just looks like any other ordinary chassis. The new chassis is consists of multiple load isolators. Each isolator resists a fraction of the impact load and crumbles in sequence. When impact load applied at any magnitude, car structures only receive a fraction of the transmitted impact load. I'm proving to you that my new chassis transmit a fraction of the impact load onto the crashworthy structures. See how the three different chassis type responds to impact. Firstly, a very hard type of chassis. The hard type of chassis is just like a chisel and a hammer. When the amount of impact is applied to one end, it's almost 100% of the impact will be transmitted to the other end. And imagine the damage it will cause. Secondly, we are using a soda can. When I use soda can, it's just like your vehicle. When the load is applied in this end, it will resist until it uses its threshold and it starts to collapse. When it collapses in, the remaining energy will still be transmitted to the other end and will cause the damage as well. Finally, the new chassis. The new chassis you are regardless the magnitude of the load is applied. Only a fraction of the impact load is transmitted to the other hand. The energy is dissipated along the whole topping distance. The tests were repeatedly tested and regardless of the G-force applied, the steel cage and the raw egg were not once affected. Example on how the new chassis can work in your car. This is a true size of 40 cm chassis. How the new chassis can work in your car. 2,000 kg vehicle with a 40 cm crumble zone traveling at 64 km per hour produces an average kinetic energy of 316 kJ. Impact into the 40 cm long crumble zone or stopping distance, it exerts 1,108 kN of impact forces. With the new chassis designed to dissipate 8.79 kN per every unit length, could endure a total of 1,108 kN throughout the entire length of the chassis. My new chassis is adaptable to the desired impact resistance. 
I wish that my new chassis could be adapted by the car maker and help to reduce the biofertility even for as low as 10%. It could save over 100,000 human lives in one year. Thank you for watching.